Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel where I share with you my adventures in my permaculture backyard food forest. If you are not subscribed to Eat Your Backyard, please click the notification bell and subscribe button. Thank you. Okay, now let's get into the video. Do you have a fruit tree in your yard that you know is overgrown, but you've grown emotionally attached to it? You're stoked on it, might be the most successful tree in a collection like here, but you know that it's getting too big. One of the things that I'm really careful in doing is managing the shapes and sizes of the geometry of my backyard food forest so that the light can get in and also to serve as wind blockage and in some cases shade on purpose and many other reasons. So very important. All right, let's get right in to the video. This particular camera angle really gives you the view of the width of this tree. You can see that the weeping nature of this tree makes it an excellent choice as an undercarriage tree. This is the Montingia, uh, known in many circles as the Jamaican cherry tree. It comes in a couple of varieties that I know of, the yellow and the red. This is a red. This is a red grown from a cutting that I got from a nursery locally. I also have some Montingia trees which I planted from seeds, which are much more vertically vigorous growers. This particular nursery variety just seems to weep very low and produce a lot more fruit than the one that I grew, the two that I grew from seeds. So there are definitely some trade-offs. I like this. I'm super glad that I got one from seed and I like the weeping nature of it, but it will just get very, very wide. And that's not okay because I have some other things that are growing here, like this little orange tree, Valencia orange, and this, well, it's sugar apple, it's, leaves are falling off. Um, coconut, fig, tamarind, bananas. So a lot of things growing here that I don't want to have totally shaded out. And yes, I'm a little attached to this cherry tree just because we interact with it so much. We feed the chickens the leaves, we feed the chicken the fruit, they love it. In fact, sometimes Jack will bring out a chicken and it will eat a berry from the tree. So it's a big producer. So I know if I'm cutting this off, I'm going to be reducing the yield, but I'll be able to use what I cut off every single bit of it back into the chicken pen. And we'll go show you that as the last part of the video. And it's kind of the whole circle of life. All right. Hey, click that like button if you like this video. Let's get into trimming this thing. So I put the camera up a bit higher so that you could see the overall structure of the tree. And now I'm going to trim off some of the outliers. And I'm really just going to follow the rule of whatever is outside of about four feet is going to be cut off. All right, so we'll start right here with this one. I love these little loppers. I'll put a link down in the description to them, but they're my preferred choice. Even little guys like that. Now, when I trim them, I try to get them very close to where the new growth is growing. And I try to trim them before they get too wide, especially on this tree, because I found when I let them get to be large branches, it, they do not heal well. It, it makes it very hard to heal. Whereas if you trim it when they're smaller, they tend to heal better. So that's a nice little hack for you. All right. There you go. It's already looking better. It's so satisfying trimming a fruit tree, really. I, I gotta decide if I wanna leave this lower stuff. You know what? Just gonna leave it for now because it falls within my circle. 
And sometimes it's better also to allow the bottom growth to grow out a little farther than the top growth. I mean, think about the shade effect of having a tree that's like this, where everything beneath it is shaded, as opposed to a tree that's like a pine tree, where the whole tree can get the light because of that shape. That's what you want to do when you trim things as well. Oh, I love these, these trimmers. Okay. What a satisfying feeling, couldn't resist. All right, let's get in on this side. This one's really close to this tree, so I think I'm actually gonna go back a little farther. I think I'll bring this in. Just following that general approach of trying to, as much as possible, bring the shape like this. Right. Little things like this that are, well, I'm gonna leave it. I was gonna say, it's good to get them while they're, while they're young. I don't really see anything beneath it, so that might be the new low branch. All right, this one, there we go, that one. I can afford, oh, one little dead branch here. Take that off. Yeah, this whole branch can go. Yeah, there's a little bit of dead growth in here I can deal with. The, these lower branches are not going to thrive. This tree, to sprout the seed, actually requires sunlight on the seed, which is fascinating, of course. There are certain plants that are like that, and you might wonder why is it so hard to grow on from a seed, you know? And it's really not. You just have to allow that seed to get sunlight while it germinates. All right. Hmm. Don't want to over trim it. Definitely do not want to over trim it. And that's a nice little, nice little trim. This one is vertical enough that I'm going to leave it. Wow. That tree looks super good now little bit of focus and we're into a whole new level of beauty okay so you can see it's just much nicer shape much more functional I can get around the trees now and I really didn't have to trim that much off and the reason is I've been keeping up on this larger pieces of wood I just throw right into the beds because you want the fungus to be digesting that stuff I do chop and drop with everything that I do so nearly 100% of everything that I produce gets recycled right back into the yard. Now this is going to go to the chickens, but that's a decent little, little harvest. Mm, if you smell that, it's so aromatic. And the reason uh, that they use this for smoking meats in places in the Caribbean, Caribbean, <laughs> it is, sweet and delicious to the hens too. So let's go feed this to those sweet little hens. By the way, if you didn't know, I have little permaculture hens. That's an easy way for you to set up a backyard situation where you always have food for your family. So you might want to check it out on Eat Your Backyard. Subscribe if you're not already. All right, let's go over and complete the circle. You chicky 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 chicky. You like? Uh oh. Hens love to eat Jamaican cherry. There you go. They can finish the rest. So today we really completed the circle. We did it all. We took a fruit tree that was producing a yield we could use in our permaculture system. We harvested that, which is going to make that tree much more productive and also the trees around it, a much more symbiotic setup. 
We took those greens and fed them back to the hens, and those hens are gonna be producing eggs tomorrow. They produce in our climate here in zone 10A in central Florida, about one egg per hen per day, which is a lot of eggs, as you might imagine. So thanks for watching, Eat Your Backyard. I hope you will check out the next video. It's coming out soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.